My goal here today is to introduce tidy evaluation in an easy to digest manner. So if you're going to use tidy evaluation, which is also called metaprogramming, you're going to use Arlang. Arlang is the best package for tidy evaluation in R. You can use base. No one uses base. Come on, don't do it. Uh, ggplot2 is just an example. I'll, I'll start off with an example just to give you some of the motivations behind this. So let's say we wanted to make a graph using the iris data set. We have iris. Let's just make a scatter plot. Geome point mapping equals aesthetics x equals sepal dot length y equals sepal dot width useful if I spelled that right. Okay, then we have a title. Hooray. Great. Love it. Xlab. Xlab here. Ylab. Ylab here. And let's make it a dark theme. A classic, even better. Okay, there it is. Beautiful graph. Everything's perfect. But wait, nope, actually everything isn't perfect. Because instead of a, a scatter plot, you want a line graph. It's one tiny line changed. Everything else is the same. Well, to do that, we had to copy six lines of code just to change part of one line. That's a lot. That's not very efficient. It can be very hard to debug if you don't know what you're looking for. Or your eyes get tired, you have eye fatigue. So instead we can put that into a function. And instead of having to do six lines of code, all we'd have to change is one. And our problem is solved. That's some of the motivation. It's, it's a get rid of boilerplate code. That's what all that extra code is. You know, all of this stuff just to change this line. We can get rid of all that with, with tidy evaluation. But let's go back to the beginning. So anytime you see R code, usually it just gets evaluated as soon as it's run. So you could have 2 minus 99 and it will be evaluated to negative 97. But what if we wanted to hold off on doing that? What if we didn't want negative 97 yet? Well, we would have to put it into an expression. And to do that, we're going to use one of two functions, either enexpr or expr, both from the rlang package. So 2 minus 99 as an expression just stays as 2 minus 99. That is not a character vector. That is an expression. All right. Well, to put something in an expression, you're going to use one of two cases. If the expression that you want to make is stored in a parameter, a function parameter, you're going to use rlang exp, en expr, and for everything else, you're going to use expr. Don't worry about the details, that's as much as you need to know. If you want to know more, you can just re read uh, Hadley's book on it, Advanced R. I think he has an entire chapter dedicated to these really small differences. <laughs> yeah, it's really smart. Now, once we have our expression, we can evaluate it, right? To do that, we're going to use rlang eval tidy, and that's going to get us our negative 97. But it takes three arguments, so it has the expression, so let's say 2 minus 99. It has a data equals argument, so you can supply a data frame, a list, a named matrix, some other data uh, named data structure, and an environment. Where are you going to find that data set? You know, if you, have a, if you have an X, where are you going to find the X? Is it in the calling environment? Is it in the global environment? You, you don't know. That's why you have to supply it in environment. So let's say we have this data. We have X, Y, and Z, and a data frame. And let's say we want to multiply X by Y. We don't know which X and which Y. But if we don't supply any data arguments, it's not going to be able to find this x or this y. How, you know, how could it? So this is going to look in the global environment for an x and a y. 
And so it finds these two. And that'll give you the first five perfect squares. Perfect. Because, you know, one times one, two times two, so on. Now, what if we only supplied a data frame? Or the data, you know, data equals argument. If you don't specify anything, it's going to assume everything you're looking for is in the data frame or the list or the named matrix. So it's going to multiply this x and this y, so long as they exist. So you'll have the negation of the first five perfect squares. Okay. Now you can also mix them, so if you want to multiply this x and that y, or that x and that x for that matter, you can do that. You just have to provide the dat data, <laughs> dot data list argument and the dot env list. You're just specifying where to pull the information from. And you can do that. So I multiplied this y and this z. So that's the negation of the first five perfect squares divided by 10. And all, all I'm trying to get at here is that you can mix the two. Which brings us to our quote and unquote pattern. So if you have something stored in a parameter or you know, a variable or something, you're going to want to use that value. So if you're going to write uh, sepal length here. Well, you could write sepal length, but you can't do that for that. You can't put that into a function because, I mean, you could hard code it in, but what, what if you don't want it to be hard coded? What do you do? Well, you're going to have to use tidy evaluation. So you can store sepal dot length that uh, that argument into an expression, and that expression is something you can work with. Okay, great. Oh, by the way, if you want to get just a character string representation of your expression, just use expr text, also from Arlang. Um, yeah, it'll, it'll just return a character vector. Or, yeah, character vector. Um, okay, so where? We have sepal length stored in an expression called x in this particular example. Now, we want to be able to have sepal length as our data in the aesthetics argument of our ggplot call. To do that, we're going to have to immediately diffuse, or evaluate and diffuse once more, the expression that we have. Now, to do that, we're going to use the bang bang operator. You put that to the left, which is just two exclamation points if you can't see that very clearly. If you have that next to an expression, it's going to evaluate the expression and immediately diffuse it again. So it's going to replace, once this, this part runs, it's going to replace x expression, x underscore expression here, it's going to replace it with sepal.length after this part runs. Now that's only going to happen if you wrap it inside of a second expression. This is the whole idea with the quote and unquote pattern. So you've quoted your code, you know, you've diffused your code, you've delayed its evaluation, and then inside a second expression, that allows you to replace these things with what you actually want. And once you do that, it's, it's ready to be evaluated like one of these lines here. That's, that's really all that's going on. Now, that's a quote-unquote pattern. So you have some variable that you want to pass to a function, and you need to use, say, a column name. You're going to use a quote and unquote pattern to be able to insert your value there. Uh, so all you do, you wrap your variable, your parameter, into an expression. You use the quote and unquote pattern, so you wrap the the bang bang operator unpacking x expression and you wrap that in a second expression and then you can evaluate it just as you would any any other ggplot that works for any case there are shortcuts for tidyverse stuff but i just wanted to stick to the one that works in every case 
Uh, anyway, if you want to learn more, check out Hadley's book. He's, he's pretty good with that. Or if you want me to dive into some particular topic, just ask me in the comments or something. And I would be happy to make a quick little video when I have some time. Anyway, that is a brief overview of tidy evaluation. I hope it helps you. Because usually people are more focused on solving immediate problems than uh, understanding software. But if you enjoyed this, you know, let me know. And if not, also let me know. I hope this was helpful, and I wish you the best. Good luck.